time for Space Watch, as we call it. I'm joined by Brad Tucker, ANU astrophysicist, of course. We always talk about it. important, weighty matters, vital breakthrough, breakthroughs in space technology and cookies today, really. That's right, space cookies. What's not to like about space cookies? Are, are you not a cookie fan? Well, we always talk about valuable resources and, you know, the desperate attempt to get water from the moon to power craft, and now they're baking cookies, really? Yeah, because how are you going to get cookies in space? Look, it, it, it sounds funny, and, uh, you know, this is a, an obviously not a real-life thing. This is part of the promo they did, but uh, on, the, on the last launch just at the space station, they launched a specially built space oven to the International Space Station. Uh, now, the question of, of, of sending something into space of baking essentially is, do things bake the same way in the gravity environment of space as they do here on Earth? Right. You know, do you remember we talked about a few weeks, a few months ago when they made cement and it didn't form the same way and yeah. it was weaker. Now the question is, if people are gonna go to the moon and Mars and they need to obviously eat, instead of always bringing food up, can we manufacture, can we cook things in space? Does the effect of pressure and gravity change the way things behave? You know, imagine, right, you're cooking this and you have to put your stuff inside. How does the dough just not float around, right? How does the dough rise the same way? How does it be made the same way? And not just for cookies, but... And so they thought, why not test it on cookies? <laughs> Look, it has to be something delicious. It is delicious. NASA, it's run by Americans, so it has to be cookies. Exactly, and so, you know, there's, it's really for, like, if manufacturing, right? Can you 3D print? Yeah. Can you heat and make things in space? So they had to start somewhere, so we'll see. Can't, can't you get rooms, or wouldn't there be places with just normal gravity? Can't they... So you can create yeah. artificial gravity, and That's this is something that people talk about, but no, it can't be the same. It's also expensive, right, right, and the forces, and it's also the pressure and how you vent the heat, right? You can't vent the heat from the oven into the space station. So all, right. all these little simple things of, you know, as simple as making a cookie, it doesn't work are the they, same Are way. they marketing it as a spin-off? You know, people ordering, call now and you can get two space Two, two space cookies? You know, it might be in the future. Uh, Doubletree, the Hilton hotel brand, sent up their cookie dough as, as the test case. So maybe they'll do something with it. I don't know. It'll probably come back a bit stale. All right. I, I um, recommend it. Meanwhile, Voyager 2, it's a second spacecraft to leave the solar system. It's shown that our solar system basically looks like a bubble. Yeah. Now, now this is breaking news of our time. You know. So Voyager 1 and 2 were built in the 70s to explore the gas giant, so the outer edges of the solar system. And then it just kept going. So once it passed the, the gas planets, it went to what we call the edge of the heliopause, and that is the extent of which sunlight and wind limits. And Voyager 1 was the first thing to ever leave our, sol leave our solar system. And the question is, is there a sharp edge? Is it really a bubble? Is it round or is it different? And with Voyager 2 going off in a different direction, they were able to see there is a very discrete, a very big boundary that is actually at the same distance, that our sun really does just leave a bubble into space. Now, what do you mean boundary? What's that made of or is it a perception is it a change in temperature yeah so it's a change in temperature and what we call plasma so the sun is a big ball of plasma that's its heat source and you can feel that effects and that at some point this boundary just stops there is no more light or heat or this plasma from the sun and you entered what we call interstellar space literally the space in between the next star and you know to put this in perspective it's essentially literally nothingness once it's now into this area and this nothingness if until these, it gets into the next star yeah and it will take 75,000 years to get to even the next star if they're so, heading in the right, dire right direction. It, right. So can they track it all that way? Well, it eventually will run out of batteries and never get there. But so, uh, how many years will it last? So it will probably last anywhere between another 10 and 20 years. It's already gotten a lot of good value right. of it. You know, it was never mentioned, believed to do this. This stuff and, always blows my mind. And, and I think that's a quick, exciting thing. So is there's just nothing. So this is the bubble we're in. The yeah. heliosphere, as you call it, that looks kind of like a bigger bubble. Type so, yeah, and, well. and that is kind of what we think is the bigger bubble of now it's now leaving. So this was the first graphic when Voyager 1 just left this bubble. Yeah. And now Voyager 2 has just left that bubble so as well. So it's confirmed it because it's two angles of what Exactly, and two drastically different angles. And right. it was kind of like, is this the boundary? Should it hit it? And it spot on hit it exactly where we thought. I think you've buried the lead here. The cookie was not new story one. Really? This was, this was the biggest story. Well, the, the cookies were made me hungry. <laughs> Just finally, um, we've got a new star system. This is giving us a clue. I don't want to alarm people about what's going to happen when the sun basically blows us up, melts us. What yeah, so, I mean, look, this is an animation, um, but the sun will turn into what we call a red giant. It will slowly expand 
you know, swallow up Mercury and Venus and Earth and some of the other planets. And a new star system has just been discovered where the planet has actually survived this red giant phase. Right. And this is always being a big question. We just thought it's going to essentially obliterate the solar system. Well, and the graphic looks like we're a toasted marshmallow. It, it does. But what this appears to be is some planets, because as the gravity shifts, the planet might actually shift out with it, therefore kind of surviving this phase and then come back to it. So we well, have to keep... Ke keeping the commensurate distance that would keep the temperature similar? Basically. Yeah, well, yeah, or at least the, the force between that gravity similar. Right. So it might be that some of these planets can actually survive this phase and maybe it's not all doom and gloom. Right, planets survive, but what's left? I mean, oh, look, it, it will still be heated up. The oceans will boil away. Okay. But maybe it won't be completely like I mean it will not be hospitable in either way. It's there won't even be anyone left in a bunker. It'll be a few microorganisms. Exactly, that's right. But it's instead of complete destruction, just survival destruction. I guess that's a good thing. I guess it's a good thing. Yeah, it's like the difference between living in Hawaii and Arizona in the U.S. You know, you have your choices. We've gone everywhere today, Brad Tucker. Thanks. See you next week.